Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment and it is time the 2018 NBA playoffs are here and these are the most fascinating NBA playoffs that we've had in quite some time. I've been making too many NBA videos this season but I have been watching and it is time to go through my entire bracket, my entire 2018 NBA playoffs. Let's pull up the bracket, let's look at it now and let's start with the Western Conference because that's the way NBA.com has it set up for some reason. Okay, I'm down with it. We begin with the Houston Rockets versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. And man, this is a simple pick here. You gotta go Houston Rockets, man. They've been the best team for this entire NBA season. The only question is how many games will I give the Minnesota Timberwolves? Who have just gotten back Jimmy Butler and he's already making an impact. Jimmy Butler's been playing well. Carl Anthony Towns been playing well. Andrew Wiggins has been disappointing me. If Andrew Wiggins is anywhere near the player, he should be at this point, right? He's not bad, but let's imagine that he's followed the career trajectory of like a Ben Simmons at this point or Jarrell and Bean and that he's really, really good at all-star already, a perennial all-star already. Man, the Timberwolves could be really scary, but he's not right now. And the Timberwolves bench ain't bad either. It's Andrew Wiggins that's lacking a bit right now. That's what concerns me about them long term. But for right now, how many games will I give them? You know what? I'll give them two because I think Jimmy Butler can do something. I think Carl Anthony Towns will have a great game or two. It'll be two or one. Uh, I don't see it going three. I think it's way more more likely to go um, you know, one for the Timberwolves than three. You know, more likely to go five games than seven. So I'm gonna go six, but keep in mind, way more likely to go five games than seven. We move on to the next series. We have the Oklahoma City Thunder going up against the Utah Jazz. And this might have been the most difficult prediction for me because both these teams are so close. They have the same damn record, 48 and 34 right now. Now, when you look at the Oklahoma City Thunder, Russell Westbrook for the second straight season, averaged a triple double. He had 25 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists per game. Ridiculous. Although, as Colin Cowher will tell you there is some stat stuffing going on there but you know what he's great the problem here their third best player ain't been doing much Carmelo Anthony is done people and they still have this guy under contract for how many years one two three years two or three years this is gonna be a mistake in OKC but they got desperate and now you now they're gonna pay for it because they're not gonna improve much in the next upcoming years. They're not gonna bring anybody in, um, and that's gonna be a, a, an L for them. But in terms of this series, who am I gonna pick? The Jazz have been playing well. Donovan Mitchell, is he the Rookie of the Year? To me, no, because I think Ben Simmons is just fantastic. I think he's just great, but Donovan Mitchell has been playing very well. He's their best player, right? Now, I know Rudy Gobert is very good. He's their best player. Can I pick a rookie to beat Russell Westbrook, Paul George, and Carmelo, Car and Carmelo Anthony in the playoffs? I just can't do it. I think it'll go seven. I think the Jazz will give a hell of an effort, but at the end of the day, this uh, series is going to be an OKC in game seven, so I'll say in seven, OKC gets it done. We move down to the Portland Trail Blazers going up against the New Orleans Pelicans. Another difficult series here. Now the Pelicans, I don't understand how they win games. They're better without DeMarcus Cousins than with him. It doesn't make any sense to me, but Anthony Davis tends to do more, and then all of a sudden everyone else steps up. Drew Holiday is actually healthy. What the hell? This is incredible, and they're they're very efficient. They shoot 48, uh, I think 0.3 percent on the season. A very efficient basketball team, decent defensive basketball team. Anthony Davis in the middle, but they have Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum, whom they're going up against. Okay, and these two men, they're perimeter shooters. So although uh, Anthony Davis will make a lot of work inside, um, I think. McCollum and Lillard, and, and Lillard will combine for way too much on the perimeter and ultimately score too many threes for the Pelicans to keep up with. I think it's going to be one in, uh, by threes in this matchup. And you look again, the Blazers have home court advantage. This uh, game seven, I think it's going to go seven games, will be in Portland. Uh, so because of that, I got to go with the Portland Trailblazers. But the Pelicans will put up a hell of a fight. I don't know how they win games, but they win games. So you have to look out for that. We move on to the next series. We have the Golden State Warriors going up against the San Antonio Spurs. 
and man, the Warriors are having their struggles, they're having their problems staying healthy, and even when they're healthy, and you know, they're healthier now, they're still missing stuff, but they had Clay, they had KD, and they lost by 40 to the Utah Jazz. This team is struggling. On the flip side, the San Antonio Spurs, a team that has perennially been a 50-plus win team, they've been struggling lately for their standards. They're still in the playoffs. They're still the seventh seed, but this is low for their standards. Who is going to win this matchup? Now, if Kawhi Leonard was healthy, right, if he decided to actually play the game of basketball again, wow, if he made that decision, then we could have something here because, man, the Warriors are struggling for reasons that, I mean, I know that the Seth is injured. He's really their MVP, but, man, they should be playing better than this. I got to go with the Warriors, though, because, again, but I got this going six games. I think it's going to be a tough six, but I think, ultimately, KD and Klay Thompson will be enough to get it done. So let's move on now to the Eastern Conference. We'll come back to the Western Conference. We have the Toronto Raptors against the Washington Wizards. And the Wizards, man, they're struggling, man. John Wall and Bradley Beal have been butting heads. Marcin Gortat has been firing some shots, you know, inadvertently, but he's been firing some shots in terms of some locker room interviews, suggesting that the team plays better without John Wall. So things are problematic in Washington. I don't get how to fix it. I, I like Bradley Beal, but I don't think you want to build your damn team around him. I think he's your second best player on a championship team at best, probably the third. So I don't want to go down that road either. I don't know what the hell they're going to do. But for this series, got to go with the Raptors. Look, they're probably not going to win the NBA championship. We all get it. But they're better than the damn Wizards, who right now are struggling. I got this in five. I think they get it done. I don't think they have many problems. It could be a damn sweep, but I'll go four and one, a four to one here for this series. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, fourth seed Cleveland Cavaliers against the Indiana Pacers. Interesting matchup here. I'm kidding. Look, the Pacers have been a cute story. Victor Oladipo, this guy exploded into being pretty much an all NBA player. He should probably make third team all NBA. He's been fantastic. Miles Turner's been in and out, but he's shown progress. I think he should have shown more, but he's shown progress. Demonte Sabonis has definitely shown progress that his son can do something but when you look at this matchup you gotta go with the cleveland cavaliers man the cleveland cavaliers led by lebron james they're playing really well right now and it's a it's a team that really tailors around his strengths when they have jump shooters on this team they're able to make something happen will i even give the paces a game I'll give them one. It could be two. I think it definitely can be two. I think the pace could be, you know, a little bit frisky, but I think there's going to be a lot of close games in the fourth quarter. I remember, I think this series happened last year, and the Pacers almost won the first two games, but they weren't able to get it done. I mean, it's going to be like that. I think it's gonna, there's going to be a decent amount of close games in this series, but ultimately, LeBron's going to be way too good in the fourth quarter for the Pacers to actually beat them in more than one game this series. We move on to the next matchup, Philadelphia 76ers against the Miami. Miami Heat. Now, when you look at this matchup, man, the Sixers have been playing well. 16 win streak. Right now, they're on. They've been playing fantastic. Miami Heat been, hey, they've been above water. They've been truly the sixth best team in the NBA in the East all year, right? They truly deserve this fit. Uh, but I got to go with the Sixers right now. Man. They're, again, they're playing well. And Joel Embiid, man, his health is a problem. But look, they've been winning without Joel Embiid. It hasn't been a problem because Ben Simmons is distributing that rock. Give me the Sixers to win this matchup 4-2. to two. We move on to the next matchup, Boston Celtics versus Milwaukee Bucks. Now, I'm going to go upset. I have not gone upset yet, but I got to go with the Milwaukee Bucks, man. I think it's going to be a close series. I got this being a seven-game series, but the Bucks have that star power, man. They have the Chris Middleton. They have Jabari Parker. They have Giannis Antetokounmpo. And the Boston Celtics have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, who's a decent combo. But I got to go with the other trio. I know star power isn't everything, especially when you up against Brad Stevens, who is a hell of a coach, and he could pull this out. But, man, I think the Celtics are just demoralized after the injury to Kyrie Irving. So we move on to the next round, the second round. We have Rockets versus Thunder. And, again, I got to go Rockets here. The Thunder aren't ready to win anything. You know, nothing really of, of, of substantial, you know, meaning in the NBA yet. And it's a shame because Paul George is going to leave and that's going to be it. So they're ne they will have never won anything uh, with this regime. But, look, the Rockets, they're just playing so well, man. They're, they're so good offensively right now. Their defense is decent. Clint Capella in the middle of the defense making things happen james Harden has been showing more effort we have to live all that i have it happening i want to say either five or six and i'm leaning towards five honestly 
I am leaning towards five. I'm going to say five. I got the Rockets winning in five games. I think they handle the OKC Thunder. Next series, Portland Trail Blazers versus Golden State Warriors. And the Warriors, I think they're going to have some problems here. It depends whether or not Steph is coming back. Now, they've said he'll be back for this series, but I don't know if that's going to be true. Actually, they didn't even say that. They said he'll be back. No, they said he won't play the first round of the playoffs. That's all they said. They never said when he was actually going to be back. So this concerns me. I'm going to assume Steph's actually going to miss at least half this series. Maybe all of it. That's going to be my assumption. Let me tell you right now. But with that said, I'm going to go Warriors. I'm going to go Warriors to win this matchup. But I got this being, I want to say six or seven. I'm going to lean... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say six. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna say seven because I think there's no way it goes five. I think there's a hell of a chance it goes six, and I think there's a good chance it goes seven. I'm going to say Warriors in seven to um, to defeat the Blazers, but I think it's going to be problematic, people, especially if Steph is healthy or not. Even if he is, they got to get their chemistry back, man. They've lost their mojo. Eastern Conference, Toronto Raptors versus Cleveland Cavaliers. Give me the Cleveland Cavaliers, man. They showed it, man. The past two matchups against the Raptors this past month, they they dominated them. I mean, it was close, but you could tell the Raptors have no chance of actually beating this team. You just can't buy that. I just don't buy that. Come on. How many games? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to say six. I want to give them that, you know, but it seems like it's going to be five, man. It just seems like it's going to be five, but I'm going to say six. I'm going to say the Raptors get two on them. Uh, we move on to the Sixers versus the Bucks. And Joel and B should be back for this series. Give me the Sixers to win this matchup here. I think the Bucks will give them a fight. I think it'll be another six-game series here, but give me the Sixers to win this one. Western Conference Finals. We have the Houston Rockets versus the Golden State Warriors. Man, now this is where I struggle, people. This is where I struggle because we all know the formidable force that is the Golden State Warriors when they're healthy. And at this point, they should be healthy. Man, this is going to be the middle of May when this series begins. Can Steph Curry get healthy in one damn month? It seems like it's a Houston Rockets year. I mean, it really does, man. James Harden is going to be the MVP. Him and Chris Paul been a hell of a duo. Eric Gore is making shots. Ryan Anderson's doing things. Clint Capella's playing defense. It seems like things are finally lining up for this franchise. But James Harden in the playoffs, man, this guy loves to choke. And Chris Paul, man, he loves to get injured in the playoffs, and he hasn't had great playoff performances either. So what I have a really hard time doing is believing that they're finally going to break through that. I will reevaluate this series when it actually comes about, because I think it will almost 100%. And my prediction may change, because we'll know about the health of Steph and how they've played over the last couple of series. I got to go Warriors. It's this safe pick. Steph will likely be back, although it's not 100%, and it's a safe pick. But I got to go seven games. It's going to be so close, and this is going to be the real NBA championship. All right, and then we have the Eastern Conference. Got to go Cavs. Sixers aren't ready yet, but next year, I got the Sixers. Okay, next year, I'm going to be all in on the Sixers, assuming that they're healthy. Okay, that's a big assumption for them. But assuming they're healthy, I got the Sixers winning next year. But this year, I got to go Cavs. And how many games? I want to say five. Like, I feel like the Cavs should honestly win every Eastern Conference series in five. You know, because although teams will keep it close with them, they'll be able to always close in the fourth quarter. I think that's just the thing that's always going to be true for them, especially led by LeBron James. But I'll be nice, and I'll say six for this series. And then we have the Warriors versus the Cavs. And if the Warriors get here, then they played well enough to beat the damn Rockets. And if they can play well enough to beat the damn Rockets, they can play well enough to beat the damn Cavs. Now, it would, again, depend on their health. But whoever gets here is going to beat the Cavs. Look, the Cavs have played really well over the past month. But they haven't really beat anybody in the West. They beat, you know, the Raptors. Okay, that was cute. That was nice. Who have they beaten? In the West, not really anybody. They're not ready to beat the Rockets. They lost one to two to them. You saw their performances against the Golden State Warriors this year. They're not ready to beat the Warriors yet. They're not ready to beat the Rockets. These teams are just too OP. How many games? I'm going to say six. And I think it could be seven, actually. I think this Cavs team is actually going to be closer than last Cavs team was. I think it's not even going to be close. I think this lineup is much tailored, uh, much more tailored to LeBron's strengths. And I think he's hungrier this year, which is also going to make a huge impact. I think LeBron mailed it in by game three of last year's NBA Finals. I thought he was done. I thought he knew he was done. 
I think this year is going to be much closer, but I got the Warriors winning right now. Now, again, I'll be following these NBA playoffs. I'll be making game recaps and all that. My predictions may change, but for right now, I have the Golden State Warriors being 2018 NBA champions. So with that said, what are your 2018 NBA playoff predictions? Comment down below. I want to know. And until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment, and I'm out. See you all later. Thank you.